Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this podcast episode, we have a gentleman from the state of Connecticut who wanted to share his cryptid encounter stories. We won't waste any more time. Let's dive straight into this next Bigfoot encounter. All right. Well, my name is Greg and a little bit about myself. Um, I'm an avid outdoorsman. Um, I grew up in the city, but every chance I got with my father bringing me out fishing or my grandfather or whoever it might be uh, later on in life, we, uh, you know, we're always outdoors uh, when we had the time, spare time. I got into a little bit of hunting uh, in my early 20s. Uh, I found out that it really wasn't for me um, and just more or less like to go out hiking in the woods looking around more than actually uh, hunting an animal, taking it down. So, um, but to this day I I fish very avidly Um, and when I mean I fish, I fish. go to places that don't normally have a lot of foot traffic, a lot of people around it. I don't have a boat, so I do a lot of bank fishing. And I live in the state of Connecticut currently. And I live obviously on a coastal, so I, I fish both the the ocean and inland rivers, streams and lakes. Um, so I'm constantly outdoors. Um, I'm also an electrician and an information technology professional for over 20 years. Um, So I consider myself a little bit more intelligent than your average person. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because of the question of, hey, what did you really see? You know, what did you think you saw? You know, people, I hear a lot of people will see these things or see other things and you know other people will say well no that's not what you saw you saw a bear standing up or you saw you know some kind of other animal or heard uh, maybe it was a vocalization something like that Um, you heard a bobcat or you heard a uh, you know I don't know a coyote Um, so what I'm saying that intelligence is you know I've seen those nature programs I've encountered wild animals you know I um, I lived all over the country and um, geographically speaking I've encountered quite a few of your you know your animals outside and you know while I'm fishing and just being outdoors so in any case I consider myself you know a little bit wood smart instead of street smart let's put it that way um, I can identify most birds by sight, you know, just by seeing them and seeing them in books or reference videos from when I was a kid. I grew up in the 80s and 90s when the Internet wasn't around and the only form of education for, you know, maybe the uh, nature things were on TV, like Discovery Channel documentaries on animals and and whatnot so i paid attention when i went outside because i didn't get the overload of stimulation maybe from the internet so when i went outside i you know i looked around paid attention made notes of what i saw in my head and uh you know when i fish i can identify what i'm catching pretty much wherever i am i've fished all over the country and uh, i pulled out species on the west coast that they don't have on the east coast but i was still yet able to identify it pretty easily so in any case um going into my first encounter this was in 1996 this was in the state of virginia this is in the george washington national forest um specifically Bear Rock Trail, uh, which is a mountain. I don't know if actually if it's a mountain or it's just a trail. 
in any case, um, it's a it's a small little mountain uh, compared to West Coast standards. Not very big. It's probably five thousand feet, but it has it actually has a bare top, and that's why they call it. It's not uh, they call it Bear Rock Trail uh, because not because there's bears like the animal, but because the rocks <clears throat> at the top there's no trees around it, so it's bare. Um, so it's one of the few mountains, <clears throat> at least that I've ever seen in on the East Coast, except for, you know, maybe Vermont or New Hampshire, where you have rock peaks, um, usually on the East Coast or wooded, you know, you have a lot of vegetation or a lot, you know, rounder, maybe a rolling hill. Uh, they call it a mountain. It typically, it actually is, um, but it doesn't have the characteristics of what you would think of, you know, like it doesn't look like Mount Everest. So people don't call them mountains unless they have like, uh, you know, snow capped peaks and granite, granite features, you know, and anyway. So at the top of this trail, it's like 5,000 feet up there and we weren't very far up. We're maybe <clears throat> with, with the camp of, uh, you have to go up, you know, it's, um, I don't know, three, four miles from flat elevation from sea level to about 2,500 feet. So you're about halfway up, I'll, I'll say estimate. And now the mountain, they're all rolling mountains around there. And I don't know if the other ones adjacent to that are named, meaning that they have names, like Bear Rock Trail has a name. Um, I'm not familiar with that because I was down there with a friend who had uh, been hunting down there for about a decade with his older brother and his high school friend who were a little bit older. And um, so they, they had been going, you know, 10 years or so down there. So it was just something that they invited me to go do with them. And I was like, sure, I'll go, you know, so great time of year. It was October of, like I said, 1996. And um, it, we were hunting small game, which means uh, we were carrying small caliber weapons, 22s and shotguns loaded with um, like four, four size pellets and higher. Uh, they're not going to do much damage to anything but a bird or a small animal. Um, so in any case, that's what we are out there for. We are out there going for... Uh, we started on a Friday, and we were out there for most of the afternoon on Friday, um, all day Saturday. And you cannot hunt on Sundays in Virginia, at least at that time. I don't know about now. Um, but in any case, so that was our travel day back home. And I lived in Virginia, but we were about four hours north of that. Or four out, we were hunting four hours south of where I lived, I should say. Um, so I had a, a bit of a ride to get home. In any case, Friday afternoon, this is when this all happened. Um, we had gotten there Friday morning, set up this little, just a little camp. And what I mean by a little camp, it was just like we had brought a, um, a propane grill in uh, one of the guys' uh truck up and i had brought i was driving a chevy tahoe um closed back four by four and uh that's what i planned to stay in so we didn't set up a tent or anything like that i was going to sleep in the back fold the seats down in the back and uh put a couple you know blankets down and pillows and just crash there when i was done for the day and um so we just rolled the grill out set up a, uh, you know, a little area for food and like a table and whatnot, a little folding campsite table, whatever, put some stuff on. And uh, there was two cars. There was, well, two trucks. There was a pickup truck, Shane's pickup truck, and there was Shane, Kevin, myself, and another guy. But the other guy went and did his own thing. Um he wasn't really with us. He went down the uh, he went down the opposite road 
or went down the road the opposite way than the way we went. So I just won't include him just to say he was there. Um, so there was two trucks, one a pickup and my four by four. And uh, we just threw a grill out. And the plan was to, you know, to start hunting that day because we only had a day and a half to do the whole thing. And uh, Sunday was going to be, you know, pack up and go, like I said. So anyway, it wasn't, it was our right weather Friday morning. But typically, like everything, every other time that I've gone hunting, it started to get misty and it was foggy, like a, uh, a fog rolled in in the mountains and, you know, like it got all gray out. The sun, you know, cloud cover rolled in and it was just, it got kind of miserable out. But it's actually good for hunting because um, that cl those clouds roll in and it provides sort of an atmosphere to hear things better. And if it hasn't rained yet, you still get the crunchy leaves on the ground because it was autumn in Virginia. Like I said, it was late October. And, uh, you know, it's actually a good, it's a good predicament to be in, you know, if it doesn't rain. If it rains and everything's wet, then you won't hear a thing. And you'll hear raindrops constantly, which isn't good. So, in any case, um, we headed out in the afternoon it's October, so you still have, I don't know, about 6.30, maybe 7 o'clock. It's light out. Um, I'm just guessing, maybe an estimate. And I'm guessing that I'm going to estimate that this happened around 4 to 5 p.m. Because there was a couple hours after everything happened, and then it got dark out. So I'm just going to estimate that, if it matters. Um, me and my buddy Kevin loaded up in uh, my truck and Shane loaded up in his pickup truck. That other guy went the other way on foot and, um, don't know where he went. Don't really care. It has nothing to do with the story, but we went the other way. We went from the campsite up this winding road, just kind of circular up the road, not like a switchback. Uh, just a big, long, winding road, constantly going up. And uh, I don't know. We went up maybe three, four, five miles into, and we didn't see anybody there. Like, there was no other cars, no other nothing. So, and there's only one road up into this, this particular mountain is the road we're on. So... I mean, there could have been more, there could have been somebody up further up, who knows, but that's not the point. We got out, got out of my truck. Shane went up about another, I don't know, a hundred feet and parked his pickup up there. And, um, now we're on this trail called bear rock trail. That's where we actually drove up to. And, uh, we get out of his, we get out of the cars, the trucks, and Shane said, he goes, I'm going to show you guys where a good area. He goes, I specifically remember him saying that there was a grove of hardwoods that had like, we're hunting squirrels. Specifically, you know, maybe a grouse or if a, uh, some kind of wood fowl comes around, we give it a shot. But in any case, we're out there for squirrel. I really don't care about squirrel, but my buddy Kevin and this guy Shane and his buddy were going for him. So I'm like, great. I'll, you know, hunt some squirrels today with you guys. In any case, um, so he tells us, let's go up into this. I'll show you up and I'll show you up this trail about a half mile up this this mountain here and uh, show you where this grove is where you guys can kind of hang out and. You know, this is your best bet to spot any squirrel up here. And then he said, I'm going to come back down after I show you where it is. I'm going to get my truck and I'm going to go around about another mile up further on, let's say, up this road to another little grove that he had, you know, had planned out. And um, he was going to hunt that area alone. 
and um, he was hunting with a shotgun, a uh, a 12 gauge. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. He was hunting with a 20 gauge shotgun, and uh, which gives him a little wider shot, a little less accuracy involved. Um, we were hunting with 22s, and we had scopes on them. Not very, you know, not very powerful. Just like a three by nine scope, but um specifically when you're hunting squirrels with 22s you have to you have to pretty much take a headshot because if you hit them anywhere else in the body you're pretty much going to ruin anything that you're going to take for meat so it's a it's an art in itself and uh it's actually pretty hard to do to do right um you know if you're going to hunt an animal you don't want to just blindly blast it you want to take it properly so that you can harvest the meat and do the right thing, do the whole purpose that you're out there, right? So anyway, um, we're walking up this trail, and it's just kind of rocky. And I guess that's why I call it rocks, um, <laughs> Bear Rock Trail. There was a rock slide, I guess, over the years, and smaller rocks had come down from the top. And what I mean that is most of the other area was covered with, you know, ground litter, leaves, branches fallen trees brushes a lot of brush a lot of like mountain laurel um like low brush real tight stuff that you can't walk through um brambles stuff with thorns on them i mean literally you can't walk through it like there's no paths no nothing so this this rock trail was kind of weird in the whole area because it was the only place where nothing was growing and there was actually rocks that you can kind of walk up to where we were going to go up to this grove of trees these hardwoods and um he said it was like between a half i don't know just guessing between a half mile and a mile up and it's not very steep you know it's pretty steep i'd say maybe a 30 degree you know jaunt uphill so we're just walking and um, we come to a little, I don't know, a depression where it kind of leveled off and then it went down for about 50 yards and then it went back up pretty steep. And I guess at one point this depression was some kind of riverbed that had dried up at one point and we're walking into it and Shane goes, whoa, look at that. And we all, we, we, me, Shane, and Kevin stop, and um, he sees a huge snake. It's a big um, eastern diamondback. I had never seen one before, and it was huge. Like, I had been into, like, pet snakes and seen pythons and anacondas and stuff at the pet store, but, man, this thing was huge. It was like an eight-foot rattlesnake. Um, it was huge. And long and you know it wasn't coiled up it was actually trying to move along and um shane said do you want to shoot it i'm like no nah, don't shoot that thing man you know <laughs> i don't want to go near that thing you know, dead or alive and uh, we just kind of watched it slither away but it was pretty cool seeing that and um never saw one again in my life and i'm 47 years old as of last week so um that was kind of cool in any case, we're walking up this trail. It takes us maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get up to where this grove of hardwoods are. And I still don't know exactly what we were looking for, but we did see squirrels up there. Um, so he was right. And we didn't see any on the whole way up, which was weird to me. Like I was in the woods. I'm from a city. You go out in a park, you see a million squirrels. Like, you see them all over the place in the city. I guess they're kind of protected or something. But I was on this mountain, and we're walking, and, and there's trees all around us. I didn't see a single animal. Like, not one, but that snake. Like, not a bird. Nothing. Now, we were walking, you know, but we were walking on rocks, meaning we weren't making a whole lot of noise. But... um. In any case, it was just weird. It was just weird. But that's nothing has to do with anything in particular. I've come across that before. But 
as we're walking up, it was right after that snake, actually. It was about 50 feet. We started going up that other incline that I had said. There was like a flat part, and then it went up pretty steep. And once we got about 10, 10 20 feet up that, um, we all we just stopped because one of us was tired of that short little, you know, increase in incline. And I don't remember who it was, but we were standing there taking a rest and we weren't saying anything. We were just looking around. And in that silence of just catching your breath, um, and I don't know what direction it was. I wish I, I wish I could. I don't, I tried to figure this out on a map one day. All I could figure out was that Bear Rock Trail faces to the east and this mountain that was adjacent to us wasn't that far away. Um, we're talking about a mile, maybe a little more. And I'm just judging that from, you know, my eyes distance. We heard this tremendous noise. Like, <laughs> it sounded like the mountain something was falling down the mountain like on the other like like if you could picture the sound of trees crashing and cracking and breaking a mile away but i guess the only reason why we heard it so well is because that mountain was directly in a line of sight of us rather than on flat ground because on flat ground i'm guessing that the uh the noise waves would have spread differently and probably wouldn't have hurt it as well probably would have hurt something but and the fact that we were able to see something that was the whole thing now mind you i didn't say anything about my background i'm just gonna say it now i never saw anything paranormal never never saw a ghost never saw an alien never saw bigfoot never saw Man, I never saw a lot of stuff, right? Just your average dude. Whatever. They never got into this stuff. This is 1996. This is when AOL was starting the campaign to get everybody online. They started giving the disc out where you can call and you know, hook your hook your computer up to the internet if you had a computer. And um, you know, then all of a sudden that started really the internet in the United States. That's what got every even though the internet's been on since the eighties. Um the World Wide Web, at least. Uh, you know, mind you, that really hadn't been going on yet. That was just starting to go on, like, right then. And um, I had no idea about paranormal. Um, just like everybody else that I've heard in these videos, they talk about, like, Leonard Nimoy of, uh, you know, like, hearing that, uh, that TV show that he did in search of years ago. Like the Loch Ness monster, maybe um, the like the Yeti of of Asia, um, like the abominable snowman, you know, of Asia. Yeah, I've heard of that. That was probably my the peak of my knowledge of this this thing at this point. So let me just say that, and we're hearing this noise, so we all look over to. I'm just going to say from my research on this subject, it probably was to the north of us. And it was an adjacent mountain hillside about a mile, a mile and a half away. And since it was October, most of the trees still had leaves on them, just they were colored. Some of the other ones didn't have leaves on them. And because I guess they had already lost their leaves maybe a couple weeks before. And, uh, specifically we saw at least i saw all i could say is what i did see i saw these little trees not little but from where i am standing hitting bigger trees and the leaves falling off like confetti so the the smaller branches of the tops of the trees are hitting the other trees adjacent to them so violently that they're losing their leaves like popping like poof 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 
and it's coming from I'm only going to say what I saw was about 100 yards on that. And I'm just guessing. That's about what I could estimate is what we, what I saw at least um, of movement. I didn't see, we didn't, nobody saw anything. We saw the trees moving. We didn't see any object. We didn't see any figure. We didn't see Sasquatch. We didn't see a tiger. We didn't see a bear. But let me tell you something. Shane turned to us, and Shane Shane is um, about five, six years older than us, and we were 22, 23 at the time, so let me say he was early 30s. And he had been out there 10, 15 years before us. He goes, what the hell was that? In lack of a better term, you know, I don't remember exactly what his words are. And we're all looking over there, we're like, me and Kevin were both quiet as children you know we're just like what is going on or like we're in the woods what is that like that's really loud like in and we're watching it and i'm and i'm and shane goes whatever that is it's huge he goes i i don't remember if it was shane or kevin he goes is that was that a rock that is that like a landslide because that's kind of what it looked like but not 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 that I mean like half of the mountain was coming down. But that's that's pretty much all that happened at that point. Is we saw all these trees and we saw this huge movement. And like I said, this is a mile away. So this is on the other mountain and we're on the one adjacent to it. We weren't all that worried. I was worried. I didn't tell anybody. But because of the amount of violence that was going on and it looked like it was coming down towards us like it was coming off of like dude it seemed to me like something was mad and it was coming down like hey why are you here why are you over there like it saw us or hurt us we had done nothing but climbed up these rocks we weren't shooting yet we weren't making a whole lot of noise we were talking in normal voices as far as anybody from five to 10 feet away would hear. Um, so I don't know, but Shane says, let's keep going. It kind of stopped or it got further away and down, down below our line of sight of vision, maybe to the base where the valley between the two mountains was. That's what I'm thinking. And then it started coming up the base of the mountain that we were on. That's what I was thinking. And I'm like, we started moving again. And I was thinking the whole time, I'm like, to myself, I didn't say a thing like I said. But I'm paranoid at this point. And I'm going, what if that thing's coming after us? I was thinking, I was like, is it a bear? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know anything. I know black bear. We're in, you know, they're in the Shenandoah Mountains, which technically we're on the, you know, in the Shenandoahs and along uh what do they call that skyline drive uh the appalachian trail runs through there not too far away in fact that's the same forest it runs it runs right through the george washington national forest and um so i'm like is that a bear you know i'm thinking myself and i think i might have said something to shane about that like hey is, do you think that was a bear and he's like, no, there's no, no way that was a bear. He's like, that was half of the mountain was falling or, or looked like it was coming through the trees. Something was really, you know, what he what he meant was like a big rock that we couldn't see must have been rolling and hitting the bases of the trees. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, come on. I'm like, that's, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what? how is that going to happen right now? You know, I'm like the probability of that happening. And we all see in this is like nil. I mean, it could happen, but the probability is unlikely. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm getting paranoid. So I'm going, what in the hell was that? Is it a bear? Is it coming after us? It looks like it's coming after us. Dude is like, he's a little bit older. He has a shotgun with like, four shot in it but he has a shotgun so we're like whatever if a bear comes around we'll just 
you know, blow a couple shots in the air, hopefully to run away after it just traveled down two miles down a mountainside to can come kill us or something. Hopefully our 22s will scare it away. That's what I was hoping. Um, literally. And, uh, listen, man, I grew up outside of New York city, like a half hour outside of New York city. I'm from a rough area. I'm not scared of much. And at that time, even I wasn't scared of much. I'd been encountered some, some pretty vile human beings in, you know, way of doing things. So I wasn't really worried about that. I'm worried about a bear or something. You know, I'm like, whatever. So we keep going. We go up about another 15, 20 minutes walking time. And then all of a sudden, we hear what you would call a wood knock in more or less terms. But when I mean a wood knock, it was like it was like somebody taking their thumb and popping it in the inside of their cheek, and it was like that percussive pop, like really loud, like really loud. We're three dudes in the forest. It was so loud. It was like I'm not gonna say it was deafening, but it was like it was like somebody snapping their fingers right next to your ears. That's how loud it was about that. And I'm we're like looking around like what? And I think Kevin even dropped to his like in a squatting position, kind of like a soldier would, you know, kind of you know, if if they had come across, I don't know, some kind of you know, danger or whatever. Um he wasn't in the military, never was. I don't but we're hunting squirrel, mind you. We had a twenty-two. Why would he do that? He must have felt something too. I never asked him about it. I don't have much contact with him this day, but um, I knew him well at the time. He never said anything about it, like what had scared him. But that popping noise sure put a fright in him. And we all stopped and we were all looking around and we were all looking around with wide eyes because as I'm looking around, I'm looking at the other dudes, see what they're doing. And they're all looking around and we're all like, something's going to happen like right now. It was almost like a warning shot was fired. Um, nothing did. Just one pop. And it was loud, man. I'm talking, you know, like I said, all right, let's get off that. It sounded again like wood hitting wood. When I was a kid, um, my old man used to have this, this maple or mahogany axe handle with no axe head on it. It was just a handle, the wooden handle. And it was awesome because it was so hard of wood that you can go around and crack a baseball with it or hit something. And it was, it was like, it was like steel. It was so hard. And I remember going outside and hitting various things with it and it would hurt your hands, you know, cause if you would hit, you know, something too hard, the vibration so sudden would kind of, you know, it hurt the, the muscles in your hands and whatnot, but it would make that sound that wooden knock you know that pop and this was perfect out there this was like yeah you know, i can't do it with my mouth or vocals but you know what i'm talking about and it i can't judge how far it was how far away it was it sounded like it was right next to our heads um but we didn't see anything nothing else just one not two not three just one we all heard it, it wasn't like you know you think you heard something and you're like, hey, guys, you hear that? They all stopped. They both stopped. And me. And we're like, what was that? Loud. Anyway. He goes, all right, guys. He goes, you're here. Whatever. He goes, I got to get to where I'm going to go. And then we all, I remember, had watches, wrist watches. And we set like a timer. I don't remember what the time was. But he said... You know, I'll mark your time when that time hits, start heading down. He goes, because, you know, if you don't, you're going to get stuck out here at, at in dark, you know, and you don't want to do that. So I'm, I'm still thinking about this noise we heard like 20 minutes ago. He apparently doesn't care. 
So, and Kevin didn't say anything else about the, you know, the noise he took, took the knee from. Whatever. I take a, uh, I take a seat on a, on a fallen tree, and I, I was smoking at the time, smoking cigarettes, and uh, I knew you, you know, you probably wouldn't, you shouldn't smoke when you're hunting because you know you give away your position. It doesn't smell natural. It totally is a sign of a human being around. In any case, um, the reason why I'm saying it is because if any natural animal was around, it probably wouldn't like the smell of a cigarette. But I was freaked out because of that noise we had heard and that sight we had seen half hour before. And Kevin had walked up this hill a little further, or this mountain, and I was kind of alone, didn't see anybody in eyesight, so I was like, yeah, nobody's around. I'm going to smoke this cigarette and uh, just kind of chill out here for a little bit and see if uh, any squirrels present themselves as targets. I really didn't feel like hunting after that. And um, I was I was pretty nervous, man. Thinking back at it now, I had like, I felt like something was watching me the whole time. And because I was with other people, I was able to brush it off you know, strength in numbers type of thing. But as soon as my buddy Kevin went out of uh, eyesight and I was alone, I got pretty freaking nervous. I'll tell you that much. And like I said, I'm not normally like that. I'm in the woods. There's nothing around that's going to hurt me. Right? Why should I be nervous? I got a gun too. It's not a big gun, but it's a gun. And I'm nervous. I don't know why. All right. So smoked a cigarette. I'm sitting there and I'm like, you probably shouldn't just sit on this, this tree and just sit here. You should probably just try to do something. You're out here to hunt, try to go hunt something, you know, m- m- move around this area here, this grove that Shane was talking about. We'll see if you can find anything. See if you can keep Kevin within a uh, eyesight. So you're not shooting in his direction. And uh, we had a little rule going on. The only time you discharge your weapon is is up towards a target, usually up in the trees. So we're not going to discharge it at an angle that you can possibly hit somebody directly. Um, so I didn't really have to worry about not seeing him. And we were wearing um, uh, the, the blaze orange, as you have to by law. Mm-hmm. We had gone up there, and uh, he had gone out of eyesight. I'm sitting around looking for a, a, a decent place to hunt, and it had started to rain. A uh, little bit of rain started sprinkling down, and everything started getting really slippery. And uh, not long after, I'm talking within a half hour, 45 minutes of we actually getting to the point to where we were hunting. And after the point where he heard that wood knock, um, and then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I'm going to move. I'm going to, I'm going to jump the timer. I'm going to head back down to where we were going because it's raining and I'm going to have to go a little slower, uh, cause it's more slippery. Um, you know, I'm going to have to take my time. So I'm going to head down now. So I start going down and I'm, going down these rocks and I was nervous the whole time because I felt like somebody was watching me but my buddy Kevin was nearby and I didn't see him but I thought maybe he had seen me but maybe I didn't see him and he was the one watching me so I kind of shrugged it off so I started moving and I was moving at a, a decent speed I was going downhill at this time so it was just a matter of you know just doing it and um, I get down about 100, 200 yards down this trail. And uh, I get this over. Now, I had passed that point where we saw the rattlesnake. And I was going down another angle to where Kevin wouldn't have seen me because he's probably still up there. He's, you know, he's not watching me. And I still feel that. 
and I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything, but I started moving faster because I got, I got scared. Uh, something was following me. And all of a sudden I slipped on something, twisted my knee and dislocated it actually hyperextended it i tore my acl and whatnot but it didn't wasn't apparent until you know i had adrenaline running through me at the point but i got lost and like i was saying i just had to go down it was more or less straight down and i had to follow some rocks that was it and it was an easy path because like i said everything else around me was different now all of a sudden i'm off into the side and i'm going down through brush and brambles because I injured my leg and now I'm panicking because I think I'm lost and I'm like, I don't recognize any of this stuff and I'm in brambles now. I'm not on rocks anymore and I'm looking around for these rocks and I'm like moving to the left and to the right and the whole time I feel like something is watching me from somewhere that my friends were not, meaning the other angle. I didn't see anything in any case um get down the mountain i had to crawl on my my stomach like belly crawl like hands like uh you know like spider crawl or whatever they crawl and call it uh under these brambles just to get through them because i literally they were catching my clothes and i couldn't get through them so i had to go under them and it was ridiculous and the whole time i'm feeling like something was watching me like something was like something's watching me flail around something's watching me like an injured animal like a predator and i'm like this doesn't feel good man you know and i just wanted to get down to my where my truck was parked on that road and just chill down there i didn't care what the hell went on for the rest of the day i didn't care just wanted to get down to that truck, wait for Kevin to take his sweet ass time to get back down to there, and we were gonna go back to Villa Camp. That was it. And it took me twice as long to get down as it did up, meaning that I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out where where I was, and it wasn't hard to do. It was disorientating. And I hurt myself and I was totally off because when I ended up hitting that road, I thought about it. I'm like, that road goes all around the mountain. All I have to do is go straight down. I'll bound to hit it. And then all I have to do is figure out whether or not I'm going up or down. And I'll figure out where my truck is from there. And um, that's what I did. But when I hit the road, I was like 300 yards to the south of where my truck was. So part of the road that we had come up. And I start walking up and I get to my truck finally. And my leg is killing me at this point. It was hurting bad. It was starting to swell up. And I was limping along and finally we get to the truck. In any case, uh, Kevin gets back down. Nothing else heard that, right? Get back down to the camp. Um, we uh, Everybody gets in there. It's an easy night. It was quick like i said darkness was only a couple hours from there we had eaten some hot dogs we had traveled there early in the morning we had gotten there so we were kind of tired we hit the sack so to speak uh they had uh they had popped a little tent for shane and his buddy and uh kevin slept with that in that four-person tent and i slept in the back of my truck alone when i was in the back of my truck that night I heard something and there was no trees directly above my truck. I had specifically parked the truck so there was no trees above it because I didn't want anything falling on the truck. So I was thinking about when I was, I had just gone in the truck, shut everything up, dark out. Everybody else was in, in the tent, you know, things were quiet and whatever. I hear things start hitting the roof. Like, think, you know, little rocks, pebbles, maybe tree bark. You know, some of it sounds lighter than a rock. But it's constant. And it's like for five, ten minutes. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm starting to get nervous again. And I'm like, listen, I know none of those dudes would do this to me. And I had one of those Chevy Tahos that had the... uh 
up up and down tailgate or you could flip the window up and then the tailgate down to get out so i just flipped the window up and stuck my head out and i couldn't see anything but i was just listening for anybody i couldn't hear a thing none of those dudes were out there i shut the the window again laid back down again maybe a couple minutes later tink tink you know these rocks and what i mean by rocks they were sizable not like a baseball not like a pea sized piece of gravel but you know maybe a marble or a you know some quarter size piece of rock you know i mean they were if if somebody threw a rock that big at your car you'd get pissed in other words if you saw them do it and it was over and over and over again and i was starting to get worried cuz i'm like somebody's somebody screwing with me and i'm in the middle of nowhere so like i said i stuck my head out didn't see anything it happened a few more times and then it stopped and then it was kind of ominously quiet and i was just like all right you little baby go to bed go to sleep you're tired just shut your you know shut your eyes and your mind and go to bed so i tried to do that and then all of a sudden i heard something i had a chevy tahoe which had tinted windows and it's dark as hell in those woods and i couldn't see anything but i heard something like and it was kind of wet out it was raining out that that evening i heard something like a light like that across the glass like something was dragging fingers across glass not like uh you know nails across a chalkboard but that kind of squeaky erratic just a a touch along the window and and man i jumped i because i actually felt the truck move too like it pushed it and don't know what it was didn't see anything but let me tell you something i went out there the next day and tried to reproduce that myself i didn't tell anybody um what i heard that night either they had seen they had we had had the you know the experience with the wood knock and the, the commotion on the other side of the mountain together but i didn't tell them what happened with the rocks and this this what i think was a hand i couldn't see anything it was too dark and the windows were tinted um, but that's surely what it sounded like. And I felt that truck move and that's a 4,800 pound vehicle. I went out there the next day. I couldn't really see anything because on the window, it had been kind of raining, drizzling all night and it was kind of wet. There wasn't any marks on it that I could see. But when I tried to push that truck with my own hand, the window, just to try to make it move the amount, like I couldn't do it. Like I had to take both hands and lean into it to make that truck even rock the way it felt. And I was like, that's incredible, man. And I felt, and I actually heard the flex, the seals flex on that window when it was pushed. Like it, it kind of made that crackling sound, like the glue that was, <laughs> that was holding the window in actually compressed. And then the truck moved uh, like it, bobbled not just easy and there was no wind blowing anyway that's all that happened that's it that's a that's my virginia 1996 episode now i had not thought anything of it i was like whatever man i don't i chalked that up to just being paranoid scared and maybe a bear had come down into our uh campsite to check out we we didn't have any food out um we had consumed all the food we brought and the rest of it was still packed up for the next day we were going to put it on the grill so there wasn't any like food around so i was like that wasn't a bear why the hell would a bear be throwing rocks at my truck so anyway all right this was 96 so the next i went out to california um in 2010 I got out there like around New Year 2010. So let's just say that. And um, I lived in the Sierra Nevada mountains, Calaveras County specifically. And uh, Calaveras County is a very sparsely populated county. Um, 
it's about 45 minutes north of Yosemite National Park. Um, and where I, where I lived in particular was along Route 4 um, in Arnold, California, which is a, a pretty popular area. There's a ski resort um, up in that area. And uh, a lot of people go up there and, you know, vacation in the winter. Um, I don't know anything about, didn't know anything about Sasquatch before I got up there. Um, anything like that. Didn't care. Like I said, the, the experience that I had in Virginia, I thought it was a bear at the very worst. Maybe stuff hitting, I don't know, hail at night. Stuff hitting my truck. But in any case, um when I got out there, we had, I had, I had a friend out there who invited me to, you know, come and stay out with him. And I was looking for a new place to live and, uh, looking for greener pastures, let's say. And, uh, so I took the opportunity to go out there and I had kind of inherited his friends. So we had gone out to a, uh, I believe it's a, either a state park or a national park. It's called Alpine Lake. It's up in California off of route four. It's in Alpine County. And this was this was on the third of July. It was the day before the fourth of July, obviously. Um, and for somebody like me, for coming from the east coast of the United States, the fourth of July is pretty warm. I don't care where you live, it's gonna be warm. Um we had gone there and it's I don't know the elevation specifically. That was probably around six to seven thousand, maybe eight thousand feet. And um, there was still snow in the parking lot on July third of like when they had plowed during the spring and plowed it into the corners of the parking lot, like it had not melted yet. And I was amazed at that. I'm like, this is incredible. I'm like, that's just crazy. Um, just being this, you know, into July and there's still remnants of snow around. And uh, we were going to go swimming. That water was like 40 degrees, so we didn't go swimming. So the only other thing that we could do was me, two males, two other guys, and, and one of them's girlfriend. So it was four people total. Um, the only thing that we could do was kind of hang out, eat the food that we bought, brought, and... Um, go hiking and uh just kind of enjoy the day and um so we decided to go hiking first maybe build up an appetite and uh we walked up the hill and there was there wasn't a trail um there was just you know just areas where you can go up and up into the mountains um and this is like granite this is like david polites from missing 411 talks about the granite fields of the of the sierra nevadas um, I hear about it now and I'm like, man, I'm like, if I knew about that then. And, um, you yeah, know, I got these big granite boulders that are like four, you know, some are small, some are huge, some are like eight, 10 feet tall and like that wide. Um, and they're just sitting there and you could walk around them. People, you know, take pictures of climbing them and whatnot. And um, it's cool. Whatever. Big trees, man. Big, big trees squirrels like the size of cats like red squirrels that are 10 pound squirrels like eight 10 pound squirrels they're huge because they don't really hibernate in the winter they eat year round they're like goldfish they just get huge and um so i'm kind of amazed i never saw this stuff i'm from the east coast and i just got there a couple you know a couple weeks be before and they're like yeah let's go up to the mountains have you know picnic or whatever go swimming so i'm like yeah it sounds great so we go hiking you know i'm doing this thing going up this going through these boulders and looking at all these huge trees i mean like i have never seen the trees that big never and these aren't even the big ones and um uh they were like all right we're gonna turn around and go the other way and i'm like i still want to go up there because, uh, like, I was looking at, like, uh, kind of like a rock feature that looked like it was flat, and you can go up there and see off the other side. So I was like, I kind of want to go up there. And they're like, all right, well, we're going to head down this way. You go up there and, you know, have fun, whatever. 
So I was like, great. So again, I smoked cigarettes and um, they took off and I'm sitting on one of these boulders, these granite boulders that's, you know, waist height. And I'm sitting down just normal, like chair height on it. And I'm looking around and I'm, I'm like, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I'm smoking a cigarette and I'm like, I'm thinking, I specifically remember thinking that I'm like, man, I came all the way out to, uh, from the East coast to California and I get to, you know, hang out in a, a really cool, you know, part of nature like this in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And I'm really getting to see, you know, what the West coast is like I'm sitting there thinking about, it. I'm like, man, I made it so far. And all of a sudden I look to my right. And I'm starting, I also have to think, I'm like, man, I felt bad. I'm like, I don't think you're supposed to smoke in national parks or state parks in California. I think that's illegal because of forest fires. So I'm like, uh, I should probably put this out. And I'm like, I should probably put it out very carefully too. So I'm like, I'm like dying my cigarette out. I'm like kicking dirt over it. I'm like stepping on the dirt. I'm like standing on the dirt to make sure it's out. I'm like scuffing it around. I'm, you know, I don't want to be like the cause of a forest fire out there, you know. So anyway, I start looking and I'm kind of laughing because I look to my right and there's one of these big red squirrels just sitting there. And he's like 10 feet away. He's just sitting there. He's like on his hind legs. He's looking at me like those squirrels, you know, like just on their hind legs eating a nut. But he wasn't eating anything. He was just looking at me. And his tail was kind of twitching and he was kind of looking nervous. And I'm like hell's his problem i'm like why is he so close to me but then i'm thinking i'm like he probably never saw a human before and then all of a sudden i see some movement behind him and another one comes up another red squirrel and kind of you know kind of runs by him and when when that one ran by him he started running too and then i'm watching these two and then in it's like it's like a perfect, like a procession of animals. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I look up and there's a mule deer, like, like a, you know, like a mule, like we have white tailed deer on the East coast. This was a black tailed deer. They're like twice the size. They're like the size of a small horse, like a, like the size of a mule with horns. But this one didn't have um, antlers. I think it was a female or maybe it wasn't the right time of year. I don't know. But it was big and it was just kind of looking at me and it was, I don't know, 50 feet away. And the squirrels took off and my line of sight leads me up to this, this deer. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Why is there a deer looking at me? Why were there just, I'm thinking this, why are there two squirrels looking at me? And now there's a deer right up there looking at me. And out of 50 more feet right up. And now I'm looking into the sunlight and it's like, it's cresting the top of this hill that I can see beyond. And it's white sky up there, like the clouds, I can see them. And there's trees and boulders all around. And I'm looking up at an angle and all of a sudden from the side of this tree, I see what looks like a huge chimpanzee step out from the side of the tree now what i mean by a huge chimpanzee the best thing that i can describe it as is looking as like that um the monkey the the cgi monkey from um the the new planet of the planet of the apes movies i forget his name but he's like mark Wahlberg's counterpart in the movie or something like that and it looked exactly it well its body features look like that but big 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 i don't know how big i'm gonna say about seven or eight feet from the distance that i was and i couldn't really see the feet where it was standing all i saw was from the top of the the, the knees and then it what it started doing was swaying and it would sway like and it would creep, it creeped me the hell out, man. And that's what really got me. Oh, right before that happened, I stood up when the deer was standing there. And I said, what in the hell is this deer standing there looking at me for? 
I stood up because I started getting nervous thinking that the deer was going to come over at me. And it was a big deer. I've never seen one of these deers before. I didn't know why it was looking at me or if it was going to come over and kick me in the head or, or, you know, I was, I don't know. Anyway, I stood up and when I stood up, I saw this figure come from the side of the tree. And right before this figure came out, that deer took off and it took off to the left and I didn't pay attention. I just saw it in my peripheral vision, just disappear to the left. But I'm looking at this figure now. And it was just a line. It was like a succession of just amazement. One squirrel, two squirrel, mule deer, monkey. And I'm like, what the hell is that? All right. So it looked like this, you know, it looked like a humanoid. It had, you could see the hair on it. It was drape you know coming down and it wasn't like fur it was hair and what i mean by hair is you can see the light coming from the sky behind it through the hair meaning it was like the outline was fuzzy like it was kind of silhouetted and fuzz and that's what i mean it was a reddish brown and this thing would sway and kind of go like uh like you see like i have a cat and you see videos online of people playing with their cats and they'll play like peekaboo with it. Well, they'll go behind like a door frame and the cat will be on the other side of the room or something. And they'll, they'll put their head behind the door frame and then peek out and then go behind the door frame and peek out. And little by little, the cat will get closer and closer because the, I guess the cat can't, and can't stand the anticipation or something like that. That's what this thing was doing. And it scared the hell out of me. I just started, I said, I said, I think I said, whoa, or yo, something like that. Just to let it know, like, hey, don't come down here. Don't mess with me. I'm out of here. I think that was my intention, but that's all I could say. And I started hauling ass down that hill. That's all that happened. That's it. Didn't see anything. Didn't come after me. That that whole encounter was probably 20 seconds, 30 seconds before I had enough. I could have stayed there longer and probably had something else happen, but I didn't want to. That scared the hell out of me. So I was done. I didn't see any definite features. I didn't see any eyes. I didn't see any teeth. I didn't see any, you know, gender or anything like that. But I'll tell you, it was human. Well, not human, but it had, it was standing on two feet. It had a torso. It had two arms, two legs, and a head like we do. I didn't see a neck. That was the other thing, like I said. It was like kind of like just a just a little stump on, on shoulders. That was it. Wasn't huge in, in the fact that it was like huge, muscular, big tree trunk legs. I didn't see much of the legs, but it didn't look like it was massive because I saw – the one side of its arm and the arm came down like its wrist was way below its uh its waistline and the arm was just hanging there at one point the arm touched the tree when it was swaying in and out and it was kind of like looking at you know looking at me and kind of like i guess deciding whether or not it wanted to come fully out or wanted to come at me or wanted to go the other way. I don't know what it was doing, but I did not feel good. And that's all that happened. Went back down to where these guys were. I didn't tell them. Um, I was again, pretty nervous, but strength in numbers. I was with people. The car was right nearby. The parking lot was nearby the food. There was a picnic table down there. The food was there. We had music playing things were back to humanity. I wasn't really wasn't really too worried about it, but I was still looking up there. I remember the whole time thinking, the whole time I'm like if something comes down this hill, I'm out of here. I'm like I don't care about them. I'm leaving. I'm like if they're if they run faster than me and get in the car before I do, that's great. If they don't, I'm out of here. That's literally what I was thinking. So anyway, nothing happens. This is on Saturday. Next day, We go out, I'm going to mention some names only because it helps me keep track of it through my mind. Uh, Jesse, that's my roommate who I was living with in California. Um, His friend who lived down the road, his name was Noah. 
his girlfriend, Justina. Um, we're all just, these are the same people we went to the lake with. We were just kind of hanging out that weekend. And uh, they're like, this is Sunday now. And they all said, hey, let's go get some food at the store. And um, this is the 4th of July now. I'm thinking it's the 4th of July. I'm not exactly sure. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? You said it's, you know, 2010. I'm not exactly sure if the 4th of July fell on a Sunday. But I remember these days being right next to each other. So I think that's why I consider it a Saturday and Sunday. It could be a Monday and Tuesday. I don't remember. Um, I wasn't working at the time, so days really didn't matter. Weekends weren't important. Um, I had just gotten out there, so I hadn't gotten a job yet. In any case, um, the next day we go get some food and we were going to cook it on the grill at the house. And we had the grill in the driveway um, just for safety's sake. If anything caught fire or anything like that, it wasn't going to burn the house down. Um, and we wheeled the the <laughs> the the, uh, the grill like halfway down the driveway and we they had like a hundred foot driveway. So, I mean, it was significant distance away from the house, you know, 50 feet away from the house, but we were just sitting out there. We weren't drinking, weren't smoking marijuana, doing any of that funny stuff. We were just eating food and having fun and, um, no music at the time. And it was just us four. And, uh, the next day after this encounter, keep that in mind. Uh, night falls were the driveways in front of the house. There's we have a direct line of sight to the porch and nobody's in the house. And there's two dogs in the back. There's two pit bulls and they are very active pit bulls, meaning that if anybody comes anywhere near the yard, they go crazy. And there's a street adjacent to this in the front yard. So it's on a corner. So there's two streets at a right angle. And the dogs are right there in that right angle, you know, just chilling there. Um, if there's any kind of people around or any, they see anything out of place, even if cars go by sometimes, they just start barking. And uh, they're out there. They're in the back. They're they're quiet. You know, there's nothing going on. We're eating, we're cooking out there. And it just got dark. And we're, not, we're like, we're eating at this point And... I think Noah looks up at the sky first and he goes, Hey, look at that. And I look up and I'm like, yeah, what is that? And now it's a clear night with a little bit of clouds up in the sky. So you see like, you know, a partly cloudy sky out and there's somewhat of a moon out. Let's say it's like halfway lit. Um, let's say half moon and the sky is pretty well lit. And we're watching this light and I'm like, that's not a plane. Cause like, you know, my, my background is knowing that most planes have three lights on them. They have a red, a green and a white light. The white light can be turned on and off, but the red and the green cannot unless they're military and have certain rights within certain airspace. They can shut those red and greens off. Um, otherwise, it's illegal, and I don't even think there's an option in most aircraft to shut those lights off, like a switch, in other words. And um, so I'm looking at this light, and all of a sudden, in the corner of my eye, I see another one going another way, and I'm like, what the hell is that? There's another one. And now they look like stars. Like, they're like, they look like they're the distance of stars and about the size of them, but they don't look like they're that far away. And then all of a sudden, where well, I'm like, look at that one. And I'm watching it, and it goes right under the cloud. And I'm like, that thing just went under the cloud, not like behind it. That's not in space. That's like in our atmosphere. It's below the cloud. And uh, I don't think I said that, all, all that, but that's what I was thinking. And I said, wow, that's weird for it to be under the cloud, something like that. That's all I said. And then we see like two or three more. And then this dude, Noah, he's like one of these amateur UFC fighters. So he's like, you know, I'll beat anybody up I see. 
Um, <laughs> he goes in a loud voice, you know, booming voice up into the sky. He goes, hey, if you're out there, come down and face me. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, I was like, anything that I've seen on the paranormal sense, I'm like, yeah, you probably don't want to do that. So I'm not joking, you man. Within, I don't want to say, I want to say five, within five minutes of him saying that, we saw maybe another light or two, and we're just sitting there, and all of a sudden, something on the porch, like, we hear something come walk off our, there's a porch with two steps, and then the steps leads to a metal, on, on, the, on the ground, there's gravel, on the walkway and there's a metal dog bowl like one of those stainless steel dog bowls that was empty it was just sitting there on the gravel and we had been facing this porch all night and something walked off that porch and we all just looked at it and then it kicked the dog bowl when it when it took when its foot hit the gravel it took two steps off the porch touched the gravel turned to the right and now it's right by my bedroom window. And there was a there was an ornamental plant and a pot standing right there. And it was the same size as that pot, which was only about five feet high. It was about five, five and a half feet high. But when this thing turned around, those three people ran into the garage and slammed the door shut. I stood there, like I said, I'm not scared of much, and I looked at this thing and I'm like, the hell is that? And it's only about 20 feet away from me. And there's a little bit of light over there. There was only one light coming off of a street light that was behind it. But it was shining off of a white house reflecting off of this thing. And it's now I'm looking back at it and it's looking at me and it turns around right behind it, like walks past that ornamental plant and then turns around like facing me, like right behind the plant. And I could see it plainly because that plant was like cheap and frilly and there wasn't much to it. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, that's not a human. And it looks like a, it looks like a gargoyle, like a, a stone, like a five and a half foot stone. It looks like it's made of stalactites and stalagmites. Like it's got sharp angles coming off its shoulders and shit. And like just weird. And it's, it turns and it's walking like a human. It's on two feet. It's got two arms and it's got a big body and it hardly has a neck again. But you look at it and it's very angular and it's dark. It's like black and gray. And then when it turned around and looked at me, it had two points of light. It looked like mirrors, like like their eyes were illuminated, but barely. Like they were whitish, like like opaque, like a mirror, like silver. And when I saw that and I said, oh, my God, that's not a human. What the hell is that? I said that in my mind. I was like, get the hell out of here. That, that was my, my own voice saying, go in the garage, too. I calmly took about four feet to my right. The garage door is right there. I pulled it open, and those three people are cowering in the back, like, looking at me. They're all quiet. I opened the garage door. I kind of leaned down because I don't want to open it all the way because it's making a bunch of noise. And I shut it. And as soon as I shut it, I'm like, I don't know what that is. I'm like, I don't want to be in this house with that thing out there. And right by the garage door, there was a baseball bat, like right where the track of the garage door is, like in the corner of the garage. And I'm like, I got to go see what that is. I grabbed that baseball bat and I looked at these three other people there and they're all cowering in the corner. They didn't say a thing. I opened the garage door again. I go back out there and it's gone. Now, hold on. Now I'm like, where'd it go? There's like 10 more feet. The dog's pen is right there. I mean, like, they couldn't have gone past it and those dogs not going crazy. That to this day, I don't know. 
it disappeared. And I'm talking like in 10 seconds, maybe not even 10 seconds. I don't know how long it took me to shut that door, grab the bat, open the door back again and go back out there. Maybe 10, 15 seconds at the most. It was gone. Dogs, quiet. Dogs are still alive. I'm like, are the dogs dead? I'm like, what happened to them? I'm like, what? This is ridiculous. So, right for right now, that's all that happens. These three people are like panicking. They're like, what? What, what was that? I'm like, I have no idea what that was. I'm like, I, I don't know what that was. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, did that just happen? They're like, yes. I'm like, what the hell was it? And I'm, I'm like telling them what I saw. They're like, oh, my God. And I'm, I'm looking at Noah. I'm like, you asked it to come down, man. And he goes, I didn't think it would. And I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm like, I'm done tonight. I'm like, I'm going to bed. I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm like, I don't even want to sleep in that room. That thing was standing right by the window. I'm like. I'm like, I don't I don't, want, I don't want to sleep in there, but I'm gonna, and I want to go in there now because I don't want to hang out anymore. And Jesse, Noah, and Justina, um, he's like, Jesse goes, I'm going to, bro- I'm going to walk them home down the end of the street. And we lived in pretty much the middle of nowhere it's in the Sierra Nevadas in Arnold, California. And their house is about three quarters of a mile down from where we lived. And they're like the closest neighbor. He walks down there. I'm like, I'm not going down there. I'm not leaving this house. I'm like, I'm here. Done. Have a great night. I'm like, whatever. He goes down there, comes back, and then tells me about this horror story that they had. Apparently gets down there. They both have a pit bull in their yard. It's a female pit bull named Luna. When they get into the yard, the dog's there not doing a thing, right? Now, they get to the gate, and they have to walk by one single tree. And then their house is, like, the other way. So they're, like, actually walking towards the street. And they enter the the yard in the back of the, the yard. And then walk to the back of the house is how they get in their house. So, dog's fine. This is what this is what Jesse's telling me when he gets home 20 minutes later. He's like, dog's fine. They go past the tree. They have one of those motion sensors that senses movement and the light and the house comes on once they get like about halfway to the house where the tree is. The light comes on. The dog goes crazy, starts barking up in the tree like something's up there, like sees a squirrel or something. This is like, you know, 10 o'clock at night now. There's no squirrels. Or at least there's no reason for the dog to just go crazy. The dog was sitting in the yard all night. Anyway, um, they start looking up in the tree, like just as they're walking up and the dog runs to the tree and starts going crazy at the base of the tree. They glance up at the tree and there's still green leaves on it. But they said it looked like smoke was coming out of the tree, like somebody was in the tree with a cigarette smoking. And this is a pretty big tree. So I'm like, how is that even possible? And the tree wasn't burning? They're like, no. The dog was going crazy. And then he just stops. And we didn't see the smoke anymore. So they go into the house. I left. I'm like, all right. Have a great night, dude. Go to bed. I'm like, hope you don't get killed or whatever was outside my window. And um, that's how I left it. So I went to bed. I think I threw a movie on or something to, to, you know, make myself go to sleep. Get up the next day, do my thing. This is like Monday morning now or something like that. And um, he comes back from work. He was a landscaper, works down the road. And was working for a girl that he went to high school with doing her yard, doing some stuff in her yard. And she lives along Lake Maloney's in Calaveras County. Lake Maloney's um, separates Calaveras and Tuolumne County. So it's like on on two counties. Tuolumne County is where um, Yosemite National Park is. 
So just to give you a ge geographical sense, um, it's a very deep lake. It's a old Sierra Nevada lake. Uh, it's huge. It's very, very deep. I think it's like 6,000 feet deep. That's some of its deepest points. It's crazy. There's parts in the ocean that aren't even that deep. In any case, he, she, this girl owns some property adjacent to this lake <clears throat> on the Calaveras County side. And he's doing some work there. She comes out and he goes, wow, there's a lot of cops out, sheriff's department out in the lake today. And she goes, yes, yeah, so apparently last night something crashed. She goes, I didn't see it. But she goes, one of my neighbors told me something hit the lake last night. A bunch of people saw it, called the sheriff's department. All right. Sheriff's had the dive team out there. And they weren't going to find anything in that lake. The lake was too deep. And we I looked on the paper after he told me this. I didn't see anything reported from Calaveras County about any incidents and for them to be spending money doing that. So I don't know if what that was going on, but it was pretty unlikely that they would be out there just doing training um, like that. And it didn't look like they were doing any kind of training. Um, it looked like they were doing something very specific. He said, I didn't see it myself, but he comes home and tells me all this. Now all three of these events happen within three days. I don't know. Go figure. That's all that happened with that. Um, that technically is not a Sasquatch encounter, but I wanted to talk about that with the moving light thing. And then the day before I had a Sasquatch encounter, it was kind of weird. All right. So you got three more minutes for my last one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's fine. All right, man. This happened two years, three years ago. Uh, summer of 2020. I live in Connecticut now. I'm on the East Coast. Oh, let me go back to one thing in California. The year before I left there, it was like 2012. I was at a Christmas party in the mountains up there in the Sierra Nevadas. And two older ladies that were older than me, they were serving drinks. And I walked up to them and I was just BSing with them. And we were talking. And they're like, hey, you're from the East Coast, right? And I'm like, yeah blah 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 they're like oh yeah you guys do this that and other things different than us and i'm like okay i'm like didn't know that and i'm like she's like so how do you like it out here i'm like yeah it's not bad i don't know what made me think of that sasquatch or you know that monkey i saw me on a tree she goes oh was, you know what what do you like that's different out here i was like oh. i was like what do you guys know about bigfoot literally said it like that and it's like, an, you know, like, like an elephant and just moved in the room. Like they both looked at me and were like, there was, wasn't a look of surprise on their face. It was a look of, oh, what do you want to know? And I said, and she, and I remember this woman, Carol, she goes, oh, we don't joke around like you guys do on the East coast about that. And I, st I started kind of giggling. I was like, kind of break the the tense, the tenseness in the air. I was kind of like, oh, yeah. I didn't say anything. She goes, yeah, when I was a kid, she goes, my father would wake up or my father would go out some, sometimes in, in the snow and find big, huge footprints all around our house. And she goes, sometimes in the middle of the night, something would hit the house so hard it felt like the wall caved in. And I said, uh, and she goes, I lived right up here. She goes, you know, not too far from where we are now. And uh, I was like, really? I was like, yeah, I was like, never had that problem where I lived. Um, and then she had told me, she goes, I don't know if she said it. Uh, yeah, I think she did say it right then and there. She goes, the Mokalami Indians, um, which are the local indigenous tribe to that area, um, they live like up in Jackson area. They still have a, a reservation up there. Um, Bigfoot and Sasquatch is deeply rooted in their in their um, their legends. So she told me that, and I was like, "Wow, you know, like that's not a you know very different from my uh, I had a girlfriend out here, 
in Connecticut who was Native American, and she said the same thing. She said, even though we live in Connecticut, she goes, there's still legends of that. And she goes, I don't talk. I said, do you believe any? Do you put any stock in it? I never told her about my experiences. And um, she goes, no. But she would smudge the house. She would look out. She would say things about Bigfoot every now and then. Like, you know, I can't remember anything specific. But she would mention it like she never saw one. And I'm like, well, what do you have to worry about if you don't believe in it? You'll never, you never will, right? She would say, well, it's not necessarily that I don't believe in it. I just don't want it coming around here. And I'm like, you know, that's a very interesting way of dealing with it. You know, it's just like, like the ghost thing. Like people are like, oh yeah, just don't, don't put any stock in it. You won't have to deal with them. Like, hey, you don't want to get possessed? Don't believe in it. You don't have to. It's kind of like what people have given you like over the years, you know, and then you're like, and then you see these things and you're like, uh, what's that? You know, um, I thought this wasn't supposed to be real, you know, and in any case, so I'm in Connecticut, summer of 2020, COVID, COVID hit. I, uh, I worked for a big, large corporation that had a lot of people in it and my uh, governor in my state shut the whole state down except for you know necessities along with a lot of other states but since we were so close to new york we were at an epicenter of covid for the early part of the the pandemic and um things went things went quickly here and there wasn't much to do and uh both myself and my girlfriend had gotten laid off from our jobs and uh she said, I'm like, what are we going to do? And she goes, I'm going to sit on the couch and watch some movies. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go fishing. This is the summer. So I'm, you know, packed the car up, all my fishing gear, just went to every place that I ever wanted to go that I didn't have time to. Now I did. And um, I went to one of these parks here in Connecticut, pulled up just real quick. This is a real quick one, man. This wasn't much, but it's, it's the only one of recent that I saw almost everything and I was so surprised I pull up to this little suburban lake and I don't even know I know the name of it now um it's in the middle of you know housing it's in a housing area there's there's a house that you could visibly see by standing on where I was and there's three or four other ones within you know, a half mile of where I, exactly I was standing. So it's not in the middle of nowhere. And the only reason why I went to this place is because you could pull right in and go fishing. You don't have to walk very far. You don't have to go crazy. You know, you could just go in there, fish for a little bit. Nothing's biting, take off. So that's what I was doing. I pull in and mind you, you're supposed to keep social distancing so there's another guy next to me in a in a truck and then there's a guy in a kayak who's already in the water in his kayak so there's not a lot of people around and uh um i fish with artificial lures most of the time so i'm sitting there tying some lures on getting my rod and reel set up and whatnot i'm in the back of my truck and uh i'm keep i'm kind of keeping an eye on just what's going on just you know just kind of setting up what i'm gonna do and i'm thinking about like what i'm gonna tie on whatever and i see this guy in the kayak and he's heading now this this lake isn't very large it's like maybe a hundred yards wide by about 200 yards long and it's pretty pretty rectangle it's not very you know very featured and this guy's about 100 feet away from me in his kayak and i see him going towards the left side and there's a bunch of reeds real close to the water in fact there's reeds in the water and there's one of these big like happy birthday mylar balloons um you know from like a kid's birthday party that had deflated and like got stuck in the reeds and this guy is heading over it looks like to go pull the 
the thing out of the, you know, the reeds to throw it away or whatever. And I'm just baiting my hook, like I said. And this this other guy that was next to me on shore, he's now going from his truck to shore going, you know, to attempt to fish. So I'm watching him too. And I'm going to go on the other side of these guys, so I'm not in their way. And uh, this guy gets over to grab this balloon. And it's one of the bigger balloons, and it makes a bunch of noise. Like, it's one of those, like, crinkly style, like, you know, it's like, (laughs) makes all this noise when he starts ripping it out of the reeds. And I'm watching him, and as soon as he starts ripping it out of the reeds, something about 50 feet off that bank, not something, I'll tell you what it was in a second, gets up. You see a huge splash of water, like it was in... I don't know if it was in like knee high water, but the reeds must have been in a foot or two of water that you really couldn't tell. It just surrounded in water. This thing gets up and it's reddish brown and it looks like a huge orangutan, like those, you know, a orangutan from South America, but it's big, big, big. Another, I don't know. I couldn't really. And this time I saw the whole back, the back of the head, the back of the legs, the back of the right arm, the the left arm. I couldn't see because there was a tree and it was hauling ass up this hill and knocking every tree to the side. And it sounded like, again, like a bulldozer going through it. But I didn't see it until I heard the commotion. And I'm watching and I'm like, what the hell is that? This guy that was standing next to me that was on the bank, he had just reeled his reel in. And I'm kind of watching to see what he's going to do. You see him pull his reel up and he's back. He's like backpedaling. He's like walking backwards, watching from the woods, like what's going to happen. The guy in the kayak throws the mylar balloon in the water and starts pedaling. He's got like a pedal powered kayak, not one one with oars and starts pedaling to the other side of the lake. And I'm like, I'm watching it. I'm uh, and in the split second that I saw these dudes take off. Well, pretty much get out of there. I look to the, where this commotion is. And then I see this thing. (laughs) Hey man. Unless we have, um, I don't know, eight foot orangutans that walk on two legs in Connecticut. That's what I saw. It flew up this this little hillside and there's all these like little sapling trees and whatnot. And it was just pulling them with its left arm and just running. And it was kind of hopping like a. Like a kid would, like at a uh, like a skip hop up the hill, and as it would skip and as it would land, it would grab another tree, and that tree would go like halfway over. Like, man, um, these trees are five, six inches around, uh, or more than that. I would say probably ten. I don't know. I, I'm not a good gauge at radius measurements, but there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. And this thing flew up the hillside and then disappeared. And then these two guys, the one guy in the kayak, just kept going to the back of the lake like nothing happened. He was watching this thing the whole time because I'm watching them. I'm like, what are they going to do? Are they going to say anything? Are they going to do anything? Like, what the hell's going on here? And I turned to the guy that was on the bank. and I was like, did you see that? And he goes, yeah. And I go, are you staying here? And he goes, yeah, I'm going to stay here for a little bit. I'm like, I'm not. I'm like, what was that? He goes, I don't know, man. He goes, he goes, I don't know. And he was just shaking his head and like, like, hey, I'm fishing. I don't know what that was. I'm fishing. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This is Connecticut, bro. I'm like, <laughs> I never, dude, I never, Miguel, I never thought about this. Never. I never had a paranormal experience. I had... I had another one like after like the initial ones, like these Bigfoot sightings, like I had a little bit of a paranormal experience, but that's it. And now that I look back at this stuff, I'm like, 
I saw Bigfoot. I'm like, I can't cash up the first and second time, but it sure, you know, I thought about that. And I'm like, that's probably what it was. All these experiences that I've heard on your channel and other channels and this and that, I'm, I kind of put the dots together, you know, two and two kind of does equal four. If you look at it, that's the only thing that I can come up with, you know, in my explanation, especially this last time in 2020, when I saw an orangutan running up a hill, it's amazing. You know, I'm like, what is that? I was scared, dude. Like I still, to this day, talk about people like I have a fear of going out, like just even just like, I saw this in a, in a suburban lake, you know, and it's like, how could this be possible? You know, you could see this anywhere then. And then now that's another experience, but I had met a kid, a younger, he was younger than me. I'll just, that's the reason why I called him a kid. He's probably in his twenties while I was fishing. And, um, yeah, I just want to say one more thing, um, before we end, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, we'll chalk up things to, hey, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. You know what? I've seen things that I don't believe. And, you know, like somebody had asked me a question on this subject at one point. And they said, hey, man, do you do you do you believe in tigers? And I was like, what do you mean tigers like the cat? And he said, yeah. And I said, yeah, I believe in tigers. And he goes, why? And I go, what do you mean? Why? And he goes, because they they're they, they're real. And he goes, oh, why aren't Bigfoot? I said, well, because, you know, not a lot of people see them. You know, I'm, I'm stretching for this. And I'm like, I don't know, a lot, a lot of people see them. They're not on a species record, you know, nothing. No, no. He goes, so he goes, you've never seen a tiger. He goes, but people tell you about tigers. He goes, he goes, if you never saw a video of one, he goes, you probably never seen one in a zoo, have you? And I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I've never seen a tiger in real life at all, not even in a zoo. I've seen lions, but not a tiger. And I said, you know, he's got a point. Somebody said to me, hey, hey, man, tigers exist. And I go, oh, yeah, really? Hey, man, do tigers exist? Yeah, they, they're, they're for real. Okay. But if two and three people tell you Sasquatch exists, people are like, ah, come on. That's my problem with this whole subject now is I've had these experience. I've had at least two experiences that I believe are definitely a Sasquatch and two other ones. I think that were related to it that I can't really point to a Sasquatch, but there's definitely something weird going on here. And I just wanted to say, my experiences because it falls a lot in line with what other people see and the lack of experience previous to their experiences in the subject to fill their mind with false visions of what they're seeing you know what i mean it's hard to say Hey, man, I know what a dragon is, right? I, I've grown up with dragons. If I saw a dragon flying around in the sky, I could say, hey, that's a dragon. I've seen him in books, seen him on TV. Now, if somebody tells me, hey, that's not a dragon, I'm going to be like, I think it is. That's what I'm trying to get at. You know what I mean? It's like there's a lot of people out there that report these things, and then other people will come and say, that's not what you saw. You know, and it's like, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what they saw is, is what they saw. You know, it's like they're competent enough to sit here and tell you the story about it. It's probably what they saw. You know, and it's, it just kind of boggles my mind that, you know, unlike me, I've never had, never was into the subject, never thought about it, but yet have had at least two experiences that directly relate to it. Maybe, maybe four. Um. And it's, it's pretty amazing. And it's all across the country. And like I thought, even hearing about this stuff years ago, just want to say it, I thought it was a West Coast thing. And until recently, you know, about the popularity on YouTube and about hearing other people's stories, and then you start learning that it's not just on the West Coast. 
in fact, it probably is more popular in other parts of the United States and the world than you would think. And it's just got pushed back. And the other thing I just want to say real quick is I've been all over this country. There's a lot more uninhabited space than there is habited. And who are we to be so, um, you know, so intelligent to say that these things definitely don't exist, especially for a race who, who didn't believe in a giant squid in the 90s. And now all of a sudden they're all over the place. I mean, you know, you, you can watch videos of them. You know, it's like it's ridiculous. And we found we discovered like I think it's I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure. Check me on facts, but. The gorilla, the big black mountain gorilla was discovered like in the 1860s. That's a very long time for such a very big animal to sit around and not be on the record. I'm just saying. Follow me. I appreciate Greg for sharing his encounters here on Sasquatch Theory. And we ran out of time, unfortunately, but... If we ever get the chance, you can come back on the channel and share the rest of your encounters and experiences if you would like to do that. I also appreciate everybody who took the time to listen to the video. I hope you guys all got something out of it, and I really appreciate everyone for listening. If you enjoy listening to Bigfoot Encounters, please like and subscribe. And if you would like to share a Bigfoot encounter of your own, please contact me at Sasquatch Theory at outlook.com all right guys i appreciate everyone for watching take care and i'll catch you guys on the next one